Hey, what's going on guys? I wanted to talk today about a text message that I got yesterday from a friend of mine who sent me a message kind of tongue in cheek and said, hey, good call on the 7D Mark II being a great camera body. And it was a link to the DxO uh, image scores that were released earlier this week. And there's a lot of chatter going on in the blogs and in the Twitter sphere that the Canon 7D's images are poor um, because of these scores. And I just don't really think that that is the case. Uh, Tony Northrup, who's much smarter than I am, did a whole technical breakdown on this. You can check out his YouTube channel. The guy's much smarter than I am. It's kind of a long video, but if you really want to get in the nuts and bolts of it, he, he does a better job of explaining this in depth. I'm going to kind of hit the highlights. Um, DxO uses three different matrices to evaluate image scores. One is portrait color depth, and that's your graduation of colors. Uh, you know, the shades of red, red that will be in skin tones and things like that. With today's camera bodies, the new ones coming out, they all do such a good job of replicating color that I challenge anybody to really look at an image from two different camera bodies and be able to see the difference in the color depth. It's just not a reality. When Back when digital first started, yeah, it was more of an issue, but today it's, it's almost a non-issue and the score really isn't all that relevant anymore. And you also have to understand this camera is not marketed as a portrait lens anyways. It's not marketed as a landscape lens, which that's the second matrix that they use is landscape dynamic range. And what that is is your ability to recover the shadow areas in your image. Uh, it applies a lot to landscapes, but to be honest with you, it applies to all types of photography. As a sports photographer, I'm constantly recovering shadows because players wear hats on bright days and things like that, and it puts their faces in shadows. So the ability to recover shadows is a big deal. But even according to DxO's matrix, the uh, difference of 0.5 EV um, is not noticeable. It's not a perceptible difference. And the difference between the uh, Canon 7D Mark II and the Sony Alpha uh, 77, which is the top rated camera in its class, is a 1.4 difference. So it's not a huge difference. The last matrix is the low light high ISO for sports shooters matrix. And the Canon 7D blows everything else out of the water. Um, it scored 1,082 as opposed to the Sony Alpha scored an 801. Now, you have to understand this camera is marketed as a sports slash wildlife camera. It's not marketed as a landscape camera. It's not marketed as a portrait camera. It will do a very good job in those types of images, but it's not going to be the best camera body on the market for that. It's marketed for consumers who want to get great sports shots of their kids on Friday nights out on the football field, Saturday morning on the soccer field, and this camera will do it. And that high ISO range that this camera provides is vital to being able to do that so that you can go in there and you can keep your shutter speed high and get sharp images without motion blur. So uh, the DxO scores, yes, they're nice to look at. And yes, in some instances, they may be relevant. But I think a lot of people are putting way too much emphasis on these scores and trying to say, oh, well, this is a bad camera body because there's a lot more that comes into it other than just imaging scores. You've got the focusing system in the Canon 7D, which is amazing. You've got the large buffer. You've got the high frame rate. You've got other things that are in the Canon 7D Mark II that you just don't find in a lot of other cameras. So fortunately for me, I'm pretty new to YouTube and I'm new to blogging, so I haven't gotten blasted with a bunch of criticism about this stuff, but some other people have for saying that this was a good camera. I still think that it is the best consumer level camera for people who want to get great sports or wildlife uh, pictures. Yes, there are better camera bodies on the market for landscape. There are even better camera bodies out there for sports photography, but you're going to have to jump up into a professional body, full frame, and you're going to have to spend a lot of money to get there. So hopefully that kind of clears up the DxO scores, and I still stand behind it. I think this is the best uh, entry level or serious amateur camera body on the market. So if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be putting out a bunch more reviews here in the coming weeks. Thanks a lot.